welcome. I'm Frank Libran, Reverend Frank Libran, the associate pastor of the Pope Avenue campus of St. Andrew by the Sea United Methodist Church, located on Hilton Head Island. Uh, we have two campuses, one on Hilton Head Island, the other campus is on Persimmon Street in Bluffton, South Carolina. We welcome you to join us for worship and for other uh, ministry activities through the week at either campus. Whenever you're in the area, or if you live in the area, we would love to have you as a part of our church family. We pray your summer is going well, that you have had time with uh, family and friends, uh, that you've even had time to get away uh, and to enjoy a uh, vacation, even if it's only a few days. Thank you for joining us for Praying Together Online. Uh, Praying Together Online is a weekly brief devotional and prayer time together. Folks join us from uh, Hilton Head Island in Bluffton and throughout South Carolina and beyond. And we welcome each of you uh, as we pray together online. You can join us via Facebook, our church website, or via YouTube uh, anytime during the week. So uh, please join us when you can. Like us if your platform allows you to do so. I want to share a story this morning. Uh, told by Reverend Leslie Weatherhead. Reverend Weatherhead was uh, a British Methodist pastor who passed away in 1976. But Leslie Weatherhead wrote a number of books, one of which was titled The Will of God. And in this very small book, uh, he wrestles with the problem of pain and suffering of human evil, and what is the will of God. Uh, over the next uh, couple of weeks, I want to uh, reflect some of his thoughts out of this book because they have been very helpful to me uh, during my time of ministry as I have had to wrestle with those uh, very difficult questions of where is God in the midst of pain and suffering why doesn't God do something? Or when people say, it must be the will of God. Here's a story Dr. Weatherhead uh, tells in his book. He was visiting with a missionary friend. The missionary's three-year-old daughter had died with cholera. Dr. Weatherhead had gone to visit his friend and the friend's family, and he was sitting with his friend out on the veranda of their house talking about his daughter, and the friend was deeply grieved, as you can imagine. And at one point, his friend said, well, I guess I just have to leave it with the will of God. It must be the will of God. Dr. Weatherhead was taken aback by uh, his words, and he said, well, let me ask you something. He was close enough to this friend that he could probe a little further into his statement that it must be the will of God. He said, did you, uh, did you call the doctor when your daughter was sick? And he said, why, of course I did. We wanted to do everything we could do for her to get better. And Dr. Weatherhead said, well, let me ask you this. Do you think that since you said it was the will of God, do you think that by calling the doctor, you were fighting against the will of God? The missionary was uh, caught off guard by Weatherhead's statement, and he just sat there in silence. So Dr. Weatherhead uh, pushed it a little further. And he said to his friend, suppose one night or one evening your daughter was asleep here on the veranda and someone sneaked on the veranda 
and had in their hand a cloth covered in cholera germ and held it to your daughter's mouth and nose. And then the next day you discover that she has cholera. How would you feel about that? He said, I would be, I would be angry. And if I ever found the person who did it, I would kill them. Dr. Weatherhead paused a moment and then he said, it seems that you are actually accusing God of doing the same thing when you say your daughter's illness and death was the will of God. Now I'm going to let you think about that for this next week. Uh, when I first read that many years ago, it, it struck a nerve in me because uh, I had at times labeled things the will of God. So I want you to think about that story as we begin to ponder what is God's will in the face of uh, sin and evil, in the face of uh, pain and suffering. Remember last week, we read that text from Matthew 7 uh, about God being a loving, caring father. And if we who are evil would not uh, give our child a stone if they ask for a piece of bread, how much more would God give good things to those who ask? We believe in a God who gives us good things, not bad things, who who blesses us in life, who, who uh, celebrates uh, the life we have by bringing good things to us, not one who brings pain and suffering and evil. And so we rest in the promise that God is a loving, caring Father. Even as we sometimes find ourselves questioning God and wondering why doesn't God do something? We'll talk more about uh, these things next week, but until then, let us rest in that simple promise that God is a loving, caring Father, watching over his children, providing them with good things each and every day. As we prepare ourselves for a time of prayer, I want us to remember uh, all of the people around us and throughout the world who are suffering, who are uh, afflicted with pain and sorrow, grief, uh, those who are facing illness and disease, those who are dealing with uh, deep tragedy and the uh, result of evil and evil's work in the world. Uh, that may be some of our friends and our neighbors, it may be some of us. Uh, if not, it may be some of us somewhere down the line in the future. And hopefully uh, our time together will give strength uh, as we face the future and as we face uh, the various uh, issues and concerns and realities of human life. Join me as we pray together. Thank you, gracious God of compassion and care, for each day you give us, and for each day you allow us to come together in prayer. Though we may be apart as we pray, we are one in heart before you. We rejoice knowing you are listening to the words of our lips, as well as the cries of our hearts. We don't always understand the pain and sorrows we must face, but we know there is always a place in your heart where we can rest our fears and our sorrows. So into your hands we commit ourselves and all who suffer and struggle this day. Help those who grieve and those whose hearts are heavy with sorrow Walk with them through their grief until their tears are transformed into signs of your presence and grace. Help them grieve appropriately 
to release their hurt and feelings of loss so that the room so that there is room made available in their hearts for peace for laughter for joy to come once again we pray for those who live each day under the power of evil's control we ask that you would free them from the evil impulses that move them for even in their evil acts they do not know what they are doing Hear us as we pray for those who are the victims of evil's actions and intentions. Give them the day-by-day -day fortitude to endure and the faith to see beyond what is to what you are doing in their lives. Grant them the tenacity to stand against evil in whatever forms it may take until your good will is done. Lord, many of your children are walking the path of declining health, uncertain about what tomorrow may bring. Give them the, middle, the mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual provisions they need for this day. Help them to follow the paths that lead to better health and healing. Guide the physicians and all who attend to their daily needs that they may give their best selves to the care, comfort, and to the healing of your children. Help us, patients, medical personnel, family, and friends, to join together in one great force of love. For the power of love is the power of your healing grace and mercy. Help us, O oh Lord, to be the good and effective citizens of the world around us as you call us to be. Let us be free from anger, hate, retaliation, prejudice, and insincerity. Focus us on the ways of Jesus to bring peace and wholeness to our world. Knowing the way of the Christ is the way of the cross. So help us to bear Jesus' cross in love for you and in doing so may your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven these things we ask in the name of Christ Jesus our Lord Amen thank you again for joining us for praying together online we would love to uh, pray with you about your specific prayer request, you can send them to uh, the email address prayhhiumc at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you and love to join you in prayer. Again, join us for worship at either our Bluffton campus or our Hilton Head campus on Sunday mornings or for many other ministry events that we are engaged in. You can find those on our website uh, anytime during the week. We look forward to being with you again next week. Uh, until then, uh, I want to remind you of a phrase that we hear sometimes in, uh, we used to hear in youth group, but we hear it in other places. The leader would say, God is good. And the congregation would say, all the time. And the leader would say all the time, and the response, God is good. God is good all the time. May you know God's goodness until we meet again. Mm -hmm.